Hello everybody, Lethal Frag here. Let's try that again. We're here for Bacon Wrap Stuff Meatloaf, the next episode of Cooking with Frag. Uh, this was done via suggestion on the Patreon. It's something I'd not normally cook for myself. However, it is not outside of my wheelhouse. I've cooked quite a few meatloafs in my time in kitchens, and uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Let's talk about the basic ingredients we're going to use to make our meatloaf. I usually wing it when it comes to meatloaf as far as the consistency goes because your ground beef can have different moisture contents. So if you're using a set amount of liquid each time, it doesn't always work out. So what we need for meatloaf is we need one pound of ground beef, one egg, one yellow onion, which we're going to use half of, a little clove of garlic, got Worcestershire, ketchup, panko breadcrumb, milk, and I have some seasoned salt here. This is just uh, regular salt that has dried porcini mushrooms and a little red pepper flake, but normal salt will work just fine as well. We also have a sheet tray set up that has grates on top of it. Try to get a good separation between the pan and the grate. This will leak a lot of fat, so if you put the meatloaf directly on the pan, it's going to become a greasy mess. We'll use this later. All right, first thing before we touch any meat, I'm going to get my panko set out. So I just put my panko in a little bowl, and then we soak it in milk. The trick here is, is not just to add the panko and then try to add it all at once. Add it a little bit at a time. So you just fill up a little bowl or container. You could even use like a coffee cup if you want to. Do something like about that. Then we're going to pour in our milk to soak into the breadcrumbs. We want to do this first so it becomes kind of a, uh, kind of a paste. This is part of the binder and what makes the meatloaf a little more liquidy. You want to have it soaked in there pretty good. That looks about right. We can always add a little more milk. You can't take any milk out, so better to add a little bit at a time. The trick to a good meatloaf is to get it fluffy and moist without drying it out or making it into a soupy mess. You'll probably have to cook meatloaf two or three times before you get the ratio just perfect the way you want it. But this is a pretty good place to start. Since the meatloaf is going to be wrapped in bacon, it will have uh, it be self-basting and will stay quite moist on its own like that. Of course, ground beef needs to be cooked to 165 degrees to be safe, but you can still have a, a moist meatloaf at 165, no problem. All right. Next, we're going to chop our onion. We're going to cut up a half an onion here. I'm going to use half for the filling and half for the actual meatloaf. It's an interesting bruise. Let's take that out. All right, so we're going to use the same dice here, very small. So we're just going to cut along the bias of the onion. If you're uncomfortable doing this, mandolins work really good for dicing onions. Or you can just chop it up and hack it. That's fine, too. The smaller pieces are nice going into the meatloaf, though. It'll help distribute a little bit of more moisture through there. We'll also keep the filling pretty nice as well. Okay. So there's our half onion. Let's give it a little chop here. Pull this out and this out. We're going to take half of this onion mixture and put it into, mince it a little bit, and then put it into the bowl with the meatloaf. So this part will be incorporated into the meat, and the other half will be incorporated into the stuffing. We're going to do a very simple stuffing. We're just going to do uh, onion, garlic, and pesto will go great with the bacon. But you could realistically stuff the meatloaf with whatever you wanted. You want to avoid anything too liquidy. I'm going to try to cook some of the moisture off the mushrooms. Or, sorry, onions. Okay, this one's got a little bruise right here. Let's get that guy out of there. All right, so that kind of misshapen my piece of garlic. So got to be careful here. Don't want to cut ourselves. Wouldn't be the first time I've cut it myself on show, but hopefully the last. Part of working with knives is cutting yourself. It just happens. Especially when you don't use a knife every day. I used to use a knife every single day. Not so much anymore. Still try to keep up with my skills, though. Wow, that is an incredibly strong piece of garlic. It's making me tear up.
So the real trick to meatloaf is to practice it. I know that sounds lame, but there is no specific recipe that'll give you a perfect meatloaf every time. It's really about knowing what you want out of the consistency of the meatloaf and being able to feel that with your hands while you're mixing the meat. Do you want to get this minced up pretty darn good? Holy guacamole. That is so strong. All right, so this is mixed up now. We're gonna put it on a low heat pan on the stove. I've just got like the most minuscule amount of oil in the pan. And we're gonna do that pretty slow. While we mix our meatloaf, we can always finish it off later and add it hot. Oh, it's just so emotional making this meatloaf. So emotional. All right, we're gonna give our station a little clean here. Always good to clean as you go. Cleaning as you go is one of the best skills you can have as a cook. It definitely takes time and patience. It's something I wish I would have learned a lot sooner in my cooking career. I would say I was a pretty sloppy cook for the first two and a half, three years that I was a cook. All right, so we're going to add just a little bit more here. So it's not soupy, but it's definitely turned into kind of a paste, which is what we're looking for. That's good. So this will help bind together the meat, and it also adds quite a bit of moisture into the final product. That pan's a little hotter than I'd like. Turn that down. Oh, don't do me like that. This burner loves to go boom. There it goes. Just trying to sweat some of the moisture off the onions. Thank you, anybody that is subbing or resubbing this during this time. Sorry I can't look at the chat while I'm on the cutting board, but I appreciate you. All right, so we have our basically quarter onion in the bowl right now. So what we're going to do next is crack an egg in there. When you're cracking an egg, it's actually better to go on a blunt surface than it is on a sharp surface. Uh, sharp surfaces will cause more eggshells to crack. Don't have to mix that up or anything. All right, everybody loves ketchup in their meatloaf. I don't use very much, just a squeeze. That's it. Yeah, maybe a little more. Just a smidge. A few hits of Worcestershire, like three good splashes. And before I forget, we're going to use a good amount of this seasoning salt, probably about a tablespoon is what we're going to go for. If the meat's undersalted, that makes the lamest meatloaf. It's pretty hard to oversalt ground beef. You can do it, but it's pretty hard. We're going to use basically a heaping tablespoon for one pound. And now comes the meat. So ground beef is a relatively nasty product. You definitely want to make sure it's up to temp. If it's not up to temp, you're going to have a pretty mediocre time. Okay, get all that stuff out of there. Now, the reason I don't use measurements for this particular uh, recipe is that every bit of ground beef has different moisture content, different companies do it different ways, add different things. So you really got to do this by feel. I'm just going to get in there and start pushing it together. And then we're going to add our milk and panko mixture. All right, not quite there. So now we're going to start adding milk and panko. So we're going to add a little bit at a time here. Don't want to add too much. If we add too much, it will end up being too soupy. And if we add not enough, it will not bind together properly. All right, so just looking at this piece of meat, if we drop it. It's not, it's not droopy enough. It needs more liquid. Basically, if you're holding the meat in your hand, you want it to kind of feel like it's going to ooze out of your hand, but it doesn't. I don't know what the technical term for that would be, but gross feeling. The reason we want it this way, especially for this recipe, is that when you're wrapping it in bacon, it'll actually hold everything together so you can afford to work a lot of moisture into the meat. Still a little more. 
Okay, that'll do it right there. Want to make sure all of that bread is incorporated into the meat, and then when we're done with that, we're going to shape it and check on our stuffing mixture. That's a much better feel. I don't know how I'd describe the texture of my meatloaf, but I guess if meat was a cake, that's what it would taste like. So pretty good. All right, take off these nasty gloves. Give our cutting board a final wipe here before we form. Then we'll check our stuffing. All right. So our onions have turned translucent, which is good. So we're starting to cook some of the moisture off. You can see that little steam poof. Now we're gonna take just a smidge of pesto. Not too much. Pesto is pretty overpowering, but this does add a really nice flavor to the center of the meatloaf. So we're just using a little tiny spoonful here. Gonna let that heat up and uh, then we'll distribute it throughout. Probably about a teaspoon and a half there, I'd imagine. All right, now it is time to cut open the bacon and then form our meat cakes. We're gonna say this recipe makes two, uh, two big portions of meatloaf. I think the best preparation for this style of meatloaf is gonna be um, meatloaf sandwiches. Get that nice bacon on the outside, nice juicy meatloaf on the inside. So if I remember my recipe right here, we got three pieces per, per loaf. Not going to lie, it's been a while since I've assembled one of these, but uh, I've certainly done it before. There's four. Okay, for this recipe, really important that you buy thick-cut bacon if you want it to be as good as it can be. You can do it with normal bacon, but it's just not the same. The thick-cut bacon has a lot more fat on the edges, which allows you to get a much better, much better basting on the meatloaf. All right, there we go. So there's our there's our mixture for the uh, for the inside of the meatloafs. Nothing too fancy, but quite flavorful. Notice we did not add any salt to this since we so aggressively salted our meat. All right, so we're gonna take our chunk of meat out. See how when it drops and hits the, it's kind of oozing out, but it's not liquid. It's just oozing. I'll just chop that in half. Karate chop. All right, so we're going to toss it back and forth like this in a circle until it becomes kind of a football. Yep. So basically just rolling it from one hand to another. This also helps compact the meat a little bit. And then when they're done, push them together like this. The same size, pretty close. This one could use a little bit more. Consistency in size is really important if you're doing multiple of these. Otherwise, one will definitely cook faster than the other. Now that we have our little meat footballs, we're going to lay out our bacon and then wrap them. So we go one, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. Put the bacon on top. Or put the oh, yeah, I got to stuff it. I'm sorry. My wife's saving my butt right now. All right. So to stuff the meatloaf, got to take hopefully a sharp knife. You can do this with like a serrated knife too. We're just going to cut into the middle. Just like that. Put a pretty generous amount of the stuffing on the inside. Just close it back up. Pinch it closed. And after I pinch it closed, I like to do the same rolling motion again. This will create a good seal on the piece of meat. Squinch it back together, and that is a stuffed piece of meatloaf. So a sharp knife definitely helps here. A uh, dull knife, it'll be kind of break your meat apart, but it's definitely still doable. You can even just kind of shove it in there with your hand if you want to. Okay. Pinch the edges, stuff that in there, and give it a little roll, nice and gentle. There we go. Now it's stuffed. Cool. And 
Now he can wrap it. If you have pieces of bacon with fat ends on both sides, alternate them this way, so that way you get better coverage over the meat. It's also a good idea to leave a little bit of separation in between the pieces. This will help the fat flow over the meat more evenly. If you scrunch everything together in the middle, the sides overcook, and then they don't get basted properly. So just about that. Put this on. And you just roll it up. After it's rolled like this, give it a little squeeze, make it a little more compact. And then don't touch it unless you have a spatula, otherwise you'll ruin the wrap. So you'll see that our one pound of meat made pretty much a perfect roll on the bacon. That's why we had the recipe lined out that way for one pound. So you use six pieces of bacon and it wraps it just about right. If you go bigger, uh, it wraps too much, and if you go uh, smaller, it doesn't wrap enough. That's not good either. Okay, give it a little squeeze. See how we have lines in between the bacon? It's going to help the fat flow over the meat and keep it basted properly. All right, so here's the real trick. Don't try to pick these up by hand. If you try to pick them up by hand, what will happen is the meat will start falling apart and you'll lose your bacon wrap. So what you need for this occasion is a spatula or a knife. Preferably a spatula. Okay, you your spatula. Wherever you folded the last edge in, that's where you want to stick your spatula in. That will ensure that it stays wrapped and juicy. Okay, so here is the bacon wrap stuffed meatloaf. So what we did first is we added all our ingredients for the meatloaf. We very carefully added in our breadcrumb and milk mixture until it was the right consistency. Then we stuffed it with a onion, garlic, and pesto mixture. And then we wrapped it in thick cut bacon and got it on a raised grate. This is going to go into the oven about 350, 375 for a good 30 to 35 minutes. So unfortunately, since it's a live cooking segment, I will not be able to pull it out of the oven with that delicious brown bacon. However, if you'd like to see pictures of the finished product, we will post them to Twitter as soon as it comes out of the oven. This recipe is really damn good. Uh, it, it makes a very moist meatloaf. I'm not a huge meatloaf fan, but this recipe is a winner. You get that nice fat flowing over the entire thing. Uh, it stays nice and moist in the center, and it makes great leftovers for sandwiches or whatever else you like to use your meatloaf for. So I'm going to pop this in the oven right now, and then we'll sit here and talk. I'll be able to read the chat after this. I'll answer any of your questions you guys have uh, about the meatloaf or anything else you'd like to talk about. Oh, yes. So thanks, guys, for watching uh, Cook Me Frag Bacon Wrap Stuffed Meatloaf. That was good. I've done several stuffed meatloafs in my lifetime uh, for various restaurants I work for, but uh, that, is, that is my own recipe, and I like it. That was a suggestion from somebody on the Patreon, not something I'd normally choose to cook on show or cook myself, but I'm happy it was suggested because I had a great recipe for it. How many calories? Too damn many. Don't eat it every day. That's all I got to say. Someone asked, why not make a single loaf? Why make two different loaves? Because for the bacon to fully encompass the meatloaf, you need to have it exactly that size. You want the bacon to wrap over so it perfectly overlaps just barely on the bottom of the meatloaf. So if you go bigger than that, you can't wrap the bacon around. If you go smaller than that, you can't. A lot of times you'll see... Uh, Bacon traditionally cooked in like a meatloaf pan. You can't wrap it in bacon that way because the bacon on the bottom will just remain soggy and kind of rubbery. So by raising it up off the, uh, the cooking surface, you get the crispy bacon all the way around. 
Yeah, I would say so, Rixus. Uh, I think ground turkey might be a bit difficult, but if you're wrapping it in bacon, that might keep it moist enough. Uh, ground lamb would certainly work. Would you recommend the same oozy meat recipe for making burgers? No, I would not. If you do the oozy meat for making burgers, you're going to end up with your burgers falling apart, or it'll seep into the grates of the grill. Okay, so here's the beauty of this recipe. When meat first starts heating up, it becomes a lot more loose because the molecules heat up, start moving around. So if you have a lot of liquid in something and you put it on a grill, it's going to seep into the grates and become a mess. When it starts trying to seep in the oven here, it is wrapped up in bacon, and the bacon wraps around the meat and keeps it in that nice little loaf. So you have a lot more uh, liberties on how oozy the meat can be since you're wrapping it up on something that will cinch down on it. Pesto is still uh, pretty heavy in this situation. This is a very heavy dish, but it definitely adds a little bit of herbiness. I don't know if I'd call it lightness, though. We used 80-20 uh, ground beef for this recipe. Cranky old gnome. And once again, if you want to see rest, uh, pictures of the finished product, it will be up on uh, Twitter as soon as it comes out of the oven. I like to keep my cooking segments live, and I'd love to cook one before the show and have the magic of you know food television happen, but this is real life. This is how we cook. You put it in the oven, it takes 35 whole minutes. Why the gloves? Because ground beef is nasty, and I don't want that under my fingernails. Thank you very much. Would that ever work on a grill? I mean, if you set if you set the grill to the perfect temperature using, like, charcoal and got it up on a rack, yeah, you could do, like, a smoked version of that for sure. Yeah, you'd use, like, a broiler pan or get it elevated in a very controlled uh, oven. If you were very good at grilling, you could certainly pull it off. But you wouldn't be, like, putting it on the grill and then flipping it and rolling it around and stuff. It'd be, like, going into, like, a smoker situation. Incorporate ground sausage? Sure. This recipe would really work for any type of ground meats. You could do it with sausage or lamb or other stuff. You'd have to adjust your seasonings based on the, uh, the flavor of the meat. But it's certainly possible. Well... Here's the deal with, uh, with meatloaf. Since we're not cooking it in a pan, a lot of the fat's rolling off. I think you're better off using uh, at the bare minimum 80-20 fat content. Because fat makes things juicy and still delicious when they cook for a long time. Uh, ground beef especially. You do have the extra fat from the bacon, but I think 80-20 is as low as you'd want to go on this. All right, if anybody has any other, uh, any other questions, I'll be happy to answer them here. I'll answer questions for about another five minutes or so. What's the difference between the two meat and the stuff that comes there? Absolutely nothing. But once again, different companies put different stuff in their ground beef, different amounts of water, different amounts of fat, different chemicals, which is why we don't have a hard and set recipe for meatloaf where it's looking for that almost oozy texture. What about this exact recipe but no bacon? It will come out a little bit drier, Kaliskanov. It definitely will, but it's certainly... I mean, you're just basically cooking a giant meatball in that case. So if you're going to do that, you might as well just make meatballs. Those packs were one pound. Uh, one pound each. Can I use something other than panko? Yeah, you can use uh, stale bread soaked in milk. You can grind up your own breadcrumbs. You can use croutons. You can use all sorts of stuff. The main thing is that you're getting some type of bread components with the milk component into the meat. I'll take a slice of this meatloaf, some potatoes, doff, and wild, and go to sleep for the winter. Sounds about right, Devil Pointer. You certainly could. You certainly could, uh, the foamy one. You could, like, put barbecue sauce on it. How I like to do my recipes on this show here is I like to keep them very simple, down to the basics, uh, basic recipe. If you guys want to expand on the recipe, please do. One of the greatest joys of cooking is experimentation and trying new things out. So if you want to try smother it in barbecue sauce, you want to try a different stuffing, you want to try a different meat mixture, freaking go for it. I'm just trying to give you guys the base recipe to do something cool. By all means, embellish it. Make it better. Do what you want with it.
Uh, pie filling, I have no... I've, I've grinded plenty of meat working in kitchens. I have never had any desire to own a meat grinder myself, though. It's a nice skill to have. Chakuterie. That might be a problem for this recipe, the mine overall. This is not a vegetarian recipe. If anybody knows me, I don't eat very much meat. I eat a mostly vegetarian diet. I still have some meat in my diet, but uh, bacon wrapped stuffed meatloaf is usually not on my menu, so. A special treat. Yeah, like mashed potatoes would be classic to have with meatloaf and some sort of brown gravy, of course. Yeah, okay, so the basics of what meatloaf is, is it's ground beef with some sort of bread and milk mixture in it, uh, usually an egg for binder, and then seasonings. Cooking with Frag does go on YouTube. Uh, we've had some issues with the YouTube exports, but it will be up there usually within a couple weeks. There will always be the Twitch VOD as well. All right, everybody, I had an absolutely wonderful time tonight, albeit I was very tired. I still had a wonderful time. Thank you all for the great times. We'll be back at it on Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific. I may try to sneak in a run of Meat Boy or, uh, or FTL tomorrow. But thank you for joining for Isaac and Cooking with Frag. As always, keep it dapper and be good to each other. That's all I got for tonight. Frag out. Much love, guys. Much love. Thank you for the 34 months, Ferret Bomb, and everybody else that I missed during the cooking segment. You're all amazing, and I appreciate the support. Much love.